Hi, I'm Michael Pfeiffer, Principal Consultant and Trainer at Industrial Metallurgists. This brief video is about steel, hydrogen, and brittlement. If you're involved in the exciting world of product design and manufacturing, then understanding metal, metallurgy and metals engineering will be a, a great help to you in, with helping with material selections for, for new designs, for new components, helping to develop capable, sustainable manufacturing processes, identifying good suppliers, capable suppliers, and solving problems when they occur, quality problems and product failures. And metallurgy and metals engineering can often be a key part of, of, of engineering and solving problems. And hopefully this video will help you out with, with that. So this video is about steel hydrogen and brittlement. Hydrogen and brittlement is a real problem that occurs. And most, most commonly we're, we're concerned with hydrogen and brittlement of fasteners. We don't want fasteners to fail during use because that can lead to problems with structures or when they're used in, in products, while components coming, coming apart because the fasteners holding them together uh, fracture during use. And cracking and fracturing during use is not what we want. So we want to understand what causes hydrogen and brittlement and how to prevent it from occurring. So hydrogen and brittlement occurs when a, when a metal is exposed to hydrogen atoms and those atoms are able to diffuse into the metal and then diffuse to the grain boundaries and then finally form bubbles of the grain boundaries. Those bubbles exert stresses on the grain boundaries that result in a weakening of the grain boundaries and that weakening can lead to cracking and fracturing of the metal. The result of the embrittlement is loss of ductility and cracking and failure when the metal is exposed to stresses that are below the metal's yield strength. So we don't see any deformation of the metal when the cracking occurs because the, the, the cracking occurs at stresses below the metal's yield strength. These are two examples of fasteners that failed during use due to hydrogen embrittlement. When, when, uh, when fasteners fail due to hydrogen and brittlement, they fail due to, they fail, the, 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 the fracture mode is called intergranular cracking because the crack goes along the grain boundaries of the, of the metal. So this shows the crack going along the grain boundaries in the metal. The, the, the image on the right is a scanning electron microscope image of a steel fastener that fractured due to hydrogen and brittlement. And what we see uh, individual grains along the grain boundaries, I mean, uh, individual grains along the fracture surface. And that's because the crack moved along the grain boundaries as, as, as it progressed through the metal. There are three requirements for failure due to hydrogen embrittlement. You have to have a susceptible material, you have to have exposure to an environment that contains hydrogen, and the material has to be uh, exposed to uh, have, have tensile stresses on it. And it can either be residual stresses or applied stresses or a combination of the two. There are a number of different materials that are susceptible to hydrogen embrittlement. I'm going to focus on steel for this short video. So with high strength, we're concerned with, with steels, we're concerned about high strength steels. These are steels that have been properly heat treated and they would have tensile strengths greater than about 1000 megapascals or have a tensile strength greater than 145 KSI. And this shows a fastener that's been installed and we, and when it, when, when a fastener is installed, there are tensile stresses on, on the fastener that can lead to cracking if the material has been embrittled due to hydrogen embrittlement. With steel fasteners, quite often they are coated with a metal for corrosion protection. Um, some common metals that are used for corrosion protection include zinc, nickel, and chromium. During the electroplating process, hydrogen atoms are present, will form at the surface of the metal, and those hydrogen atoms can diffuse into the metal. Um, and this shows a, a plating bath on the, on the right. So zinc, um, so as I mentioned, the, these coatings are, are um, the common coatings are z zinc, nickel, and chromium. The hydrogen embrittlement can be prevented for parts for high strength steel fasteners that are electroplated by baking the fasteners within a few hours after the coating has been deposited on the metal. During the bake out process, hydrogen diffuses out of the metal like as shown here, 
and when the hydrogen diffuses out of and the hydrogen diffuses out of the metal before it's able to get to the grain boundaries and form the bubbles. So it's very important that the bake out occur a few hours after electroplating so that the hydrogen does not have enough time to get to the grain boundaries because if too much time uh, elapses between electroplating and the bake out then the hydrogen will get to the grain boundaries and the bake out will not will not work. Also the bake temperature and time have to also be sufficient to enable the hydrogen to diffuse out of the steel. And remember, the steel is coated with a coating, either zinc or nickel or chromium or whatever other coating might be used. And that coating is, is a barrier to the hydrogen moving out. And so the temperature and the time have to be, the temperature has to be high enough, the time long enough to make sure that the hydrogen is able to diffuse through out of the steel and through the coating. There are a number of ASTM specifications that, that discuss the baking temperatures and times based on steel strength and or hardness. And you can consult these, these documents for, for direction about the temperatures and times to use with electroplated high strength steel parts. There's also this, this standard as well. Um, other, uh, other metals can also um, uh, undergo hydrogen embrittlement. Um, and, and there, that, 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 that too much to discuss in this in this particular um, discussion. But like titanium is another alloy that can be embrittled due to hydrogen. But I'll discuss that in another session. Um, there are also other sources of hydrogen that can cause embrittlement of high strength steels. The pickling used during the cleaning process prior to electroplating can can cause uh, embrittlement. And so, a there, there are steps to take to prevent embrittlement due to this process due to pickling. Also, corrosion reactions during use and exposure to environments that contain hydrogen during use can also be caused in hydrogen embrittlement, and steps have to be taken for these for, for these as well. And I'll discuss that in a, in a separate video. Um, just so to wrap up, hydrogen embrittlement is a real thing. We have to do things uh, to prevent high strength steels from, from in, becoming embrittled. In fact, I worked on a project last month where parts were failing in a, in a product due to hydrogen embrittlement and that and, and the failure of the fastener was resulting in two components coming apart and that was a problem for the, the reliability of the entire product. So it's important to understand the mechanism of hydrogen embrittlement and then the steps to take to prevent embrittlement from occurring. And also it, if you send parts out if you're having fasteners made by a third party and they're having the parts electroplated by another per party, it's important to have a good specification that this that that lays out um, the requirements on the on the coating and the hydrogen bake out, and to make sure that your suppliers understand the the, the your requirements and the bake out, so that you don't have pro get parts, put them in your products, and find out a year later. That you're having a problem that's that um, results in um, in in, un in unhappiness for a lot of people. Um, so that's it. If you enjoyed this watching this video and you learned something, please subscribe to our channel to get announcements about future future videos, and also like it and share it with your friends and colleagues. And finally, we offer lots of metallurgy training on with with different with courses and. Um, videos. And also we have free um, um, a, um, articles that we send out each week on, on different topics of metallurgy and metals engineering with respect to product design and manufacturing. And you can go to our website and get all that information there. Here's the, the different training that we offer and the resources, including our blog, which has a sign up to receive notices about new articles, podcasts, courses, and webinars. So if you're interested in learning more about metallurgy to help you be more, a more productive and effective engineer, sign up so you can get, get all of our stuff. Um, thanks for watching. Good luck with your metals and feel free to call or email if you have a question or want to discuss a project. Bye.